This is an electronics lab, the basic equipment you need to build circuits. And this is also an electronics lab. I've been an engineering professor for 15 years and I've always taught with this equipment. But if you're learning on your own, this stuff is too expensive and too complicated to learn. So I created NLAB, an affordable and portable piece of equipment that allows anyone, anywhere, the ability to design and build with electronics. In our last two videos, we showed you how to build a light and make it blink. But we didn't do a deep dive into how we use this mini lab to build those things. In this video, we'll learn the functions of these three tools, how the NLAB performs those same functions, and why these tools are essential for designing and building circuits. The NLAB combines the three most useful tools you'll need for building circuits. These are a power supply, oscilloscope, and function generator. You can think of these machines like a band playing a concert. The power supply provides the electricity for all the instruments. The function generator is the musician making the notes, and the oscilloscope records the sound and shows it to you. We're going to go through the three machines inside the NLAB. First, we'll start by seeing how the NLAB supplies power to your circuit. Then, we'll make the invisible visible and see inside your circuit using the oscilloscope. Then, using the function generator, we'll send signals into your circuit and make it do cool stuff. And finally, if you're interested in recording data from your circuit, like measuring how temperature changes throughout the day, we'll show you how NLAB can do this too. Okay, what you'll need. A laptop with the NLAB app, an NLAB and a breadboard and a USB-C cable. Some simple circuit components like a resistor and an LED. Check out the NLAB kit in the link below for a convenient source for parts like these. The power supplies three things. Of course, it supplies the power, but it also shows you how much power you're using and protects you from drawing too much power. This is important because let's say you're trying to design a pair of headphones and you want to promise that they'll have a 10 hour battery life. With a power supply, you can check that the headphones you're designing are consuming the right amount of power. That way they have a nice long battery life. So you won't be surprised by a low battery life and bad Amazon reviews when you finally launch your product. And the safety feature allows you to build without worry. If your headphone circuit accidentally consumes too much power, your circuit won't get fried. The power supply will just turn off and everything will be safe. We use the NLAB as a source of power in our LED circuit. We're designing low power circuits, things that are battery powered, like your phone or computer, not things that draw a lot of power and plug into the wall, like a air conditioner or hair dryer. The job of the power supply is to make a constant, clean, known voltage and maintain it as you draw more power. You can turn the power supply on and off with the power button, located here by the top right hand corner of the board. The red and blue LEDs indicate the power supply is on. The NLAB uses a USB-C connection from your computer and it uses your computer's battery power to create plus and minus five volts. How can a voltage be negative? Well, minus five volts means that it's five volts less than zero volts or ground. Ground is the voltage we measure against. When you state a voltage, that implies that it is that many volts above the ground or the baseline voltage. You can think of voltages as pushing power around. So having both positive and negative voltages will let you both push and pull power through your circuit. In the NLAB app, you can see how much power is being drawn from your computer. The green bar gets longer with more power used. When the bar gets to the end, you've used up all the available power. The power going into these resistors is making them very hot. This is where the nifty safety feature kicks in. The power supply automatically turns off. This also happens during a short circuit when a power wire touches ground. The green LEDs flash when this happens. The red and blue LEDs will turn off and the app will let you know. Find where the wires are touching, remove them, press the power button to reactivate the power supply. Electricity isn't something that you'd see, hear, feel, or smell. An oscilloscope is the tool that allows us to visualize electricity. This is so important when your circuit isn't working and you have no idea why. The oscilloscope makes the invisible visible, lets us see inside our circuit, so you can see what the problem is, solve the mystery, and troubleshoot. In our second video, we added a button to turn the LED on and off. The button controlled whether power was applied to the circuit. When you press the button, the circuit is closed, and the LED turns on. When the button is not pressed, the circuit is not complete, and the LED is off. But what is happening to the flow of electricity before and after I press the button? I want to see it to really understand what is happening to the voltage over time. There are four interesting points in the circuit. Here, five volts. Here, where the button touches the LED. Here, where the button touches the resistor and ground. The NLAB can see four signals at a time when they're attached to the rows connected to channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four. So I can use wires to connect this point to channel one, this point to channel two, this point to channel three, and this point to channel four. Now I'll be able to see what happens to each point when I press the button. When you first turn on the NLAB app, it shows the voltage on the channel one pin by default. Channel one is plugged into five volts, so we can see the line up here. You could turn on more channels by pressing their corresponding buttons. The graph is made of a grid. The horizontal axis represents time. The vertical axis represents voltage. Each grid box is called a division or div. The time div horizontally and the voltage div vertically. 
When you first open your NLAB app, the default time div setting will be 200 milliseconds, or one fifth of a second. For reference, it takes you about 300 milliseconds to blink. So the line is moving pretty quick. This means that when you're looking at your screen, you'll be able to see what's going on inside your circuit for 200 milliseconds times this many divs. So it takes the signal 2.4 seconds to go all the way across the screen. If I press the button and wait about a second, I see the signal change about five divs apart. That makes sense. Five divs at 200 milliseconds each is one second. So how do we read the voltage? The voltage setting can be different for each channel. The default setting is one volt per div, and the screen is 10 divs tall. The triangle shows where zero volts is, so the height of the screen represents plus five to minus five volts. Right now, all four channels are on, and their triangles are right on top of each other. Click a triangle and move it away from the others. Now I can see all four at the same time. Remember, the triangle is still zero volts for that channel. Count up from there, not the middle of the screen. Let's practice. Here are some voltages on four channels. Take a second, think about what the voltages are. Okay, let's look at them. The green line is one div above the green triangle. The setting for channel one is one volt per div. So channel one is currently reading one volt. The yellow line for channel two is two divisions below the yellow triangle. Channel two is set to one volt per div. So channel two is currently reading negative two volts. The blue line is five divisions above the blue triangle. The setting for channel 3 is 0.5 volts per div, so that means channel 3 is reading 2.5 volts. The red line for channel 4 is alternating between 0 and 1 div. Channel 4 is set to 5 volts per division, so channel 4 is reading a voltage that alternates between 0 and 5 volts. Okay, so when I press the button, channel 1 is 5 volts, channel 4 is 0 volts. Those make sense because they're plugged directly into those voltages. Channel 2 is 1, 2, 3 volts, and channel 3 is 1, 2, about three volts. So channel two and three are about the same voltage. I could see that better if I put them on top of each other. Yeah, so channel two and three are the same voltage. That's about one, two, three volts. Why did we see four volts and three volts at the LED before and after we pushed the button? That has to do with how LEDs work. We'll get there in a future video. A function generator is a machine that supplies power in a repeating pattern. The typical shapes are sine waves, triangle waves, and square waves. Sine waves turn the power on and off in a smooth pattern, triangle waves a little less smooth, and square waves from full on to full off. So if you want a constant supply of power, use the power supply. If you want to change the power over time, use the function generator. So I can make a blinking light without me having to sit here pressing the button forever. Or I can use it to simulate a circuit. Let's say I'm building a pulse counting circuit, but I haven't gotten around to the part of the circuit that actually counts your pulse. I can use a function generator to simulate a pulse in the meantime. We used the function generator in the first video to make the LED blink and fade in and out. Using the oscilloscope, we'll be able to see the waves that made that happen. The NLAB has four function generator inputs, A1 and A2, and P1 and P2. A1 and A2 make sine waves and triangle waves. P1 and P2 make square waves. Each type of waveform is useful in different circuits, like making sound or blinking LEDs in different ways. Let's see them. Using a wire, connect A1 to channel 1. Click the A1 button to turn it on. Immediately, we see the voltage on channel 1. Look at the settings for A1. We see that by default, it is a 1 volt sine wave and unipolar. Unipolar means that the voltage will be all positive. From the time div, the sine wave repeats every second, since it is 1 hertz or once per second. And from the voltage div, we can see it goes from 0 volts to 1 volt. Try changing the settings yourself. Set A1 to a bipolar 3 volt triangle wave that happens 3 times a second. Go ahead, I'll wait. Here's what you probably just did. Change it to bipolar, which means the voltage goes positive and negative, and now the sine wave goes from one volt to minus one volt. Change it to a triangle wave. Mm, now it's pointy. Change the amplitude and you control how high the peaks go. Change the frequency to three hertz. That's how often the wave repeats. The symmetry of bipolar signals lets you test how your circuit will work with both positive and negative voltages, and can even be used to turn on two LEDs, but more on this in a future video. Let's go back to the fading LED. We're using P1 to power the LED instead of 5 volts. I'll connect P1 to channel 1 so I can see what's happening. P1 makes a square wave between 5 volts and ground. The duty setting adjusts how long the 5 volt is on relative to how long it is off. So 75% duty shows the LED is on 75% of the time. This type of control of square wave is called pulse width modulation, or PWM. It could be used to set the brightness of an LED or how fast a motor goes. Let's see how it controls how bright the LED is. Set the frequency to 1000 Hertz. Now the screen is super busy. Adjust the time setting to zoom in to see just a few square waves. Set the duty to 25%. 
The oscilloscope shows us that the LED is turning full on and full off. But my eyes and the camera can't see it change that fast. They average it out. So they see 25% of the maximum brightness. This effect is called persistence of vision. And without your oscilloscope, you wouldn't be able to tell if the LED was blinking or not. If you've created a circuit that creates data that changes with time, like maybe the temperature in your room or your heart rate, you probably want to save it. You should not take a picture of your computer screen like I see a lot of my students do. The NLAB has a Save Traces button that works way better. Trust me, I'm a professor. You get way more points with better looking graphs. First, use the Single button to get one screen's worth of data, and then the screen will automatically stop updating. When it has stopped, click Save Traces and note the folder where the data is saved. Go to that folder and you'll see a screenshot of the NLAB graph and a file with columns of raw data. These columns are the interesting part. You can open them in a spreadsheet and plot them however you want. Or you can use a programming language like Python to grab the data, log it, plot it, and then calculate something like how your heartbeat changes during a scary movie. Or you could feed it into AI and see what it has to say about your data. The NLAB is a great all-in-one tool for powering your circuit, reading voltages, and making signals. The app lets you control what you see and what you want to make. And it lets you save your data. Of course, I think the NLAB is great. I made it. I'm not saying that the NLAB is the last tool you'll ever need, or that it's the best at anything in particular, but it's designed to do 90% of what most circuits need. The machines that the NLAB replicates cost thousands of dollars. So before you commit to them, the NLAB is a great place to start. And now that we know a little bit more how it works, we can do a deeper dive in how to design and build circuits. See you next time. Thank you.